First is that uh, it is in a, a region that is uh, coal dependent. Uh, so essentially the largest emissions, uh, if you like, the footprint is found here in Pumana. And what the, the negative effects of uh, soxes and noxes, uh, immediate health of communities, and also the greenhouse gas CO2 emissions. Uh, so what we've been able to illustrate is that uh, the conversation around uh, your new energy sources is not a binary discussion. It's not coal, this is renewable and wind. It's doing all of the above. So what this site does, it's a perfect illustration of the coexistence of the energy technology. And it's significant that it's happening in Pumala. Very, very significant. When Mr. Teke shared with me, <laughs> he said he's going to Pumala. Ask him, I almost laughed off my, fell off my chair. He says, no, there's wind, there's wind. You know, he's very passionate. There's wind, I'm telling you. Okay, of course, you have done your, your studies. Eh? And now I'm seeing it live. He tells me, keeps on sending me pictures. When we promise, we deliver. It's an important point. What is that point is that if government were to do its fair share, the private sector is ready to deliver. And that combination is potent. That's what the country needs. So I, I'm just saying the significance of this, it's exactly that. So when I go to, and I'll, I'll ask for your permission, Brahmai, just to use the pictures of this site to show you that uh, the nearest coal power station, how many kilometers? 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers. And I'll show you that there's uh, 750 megawatts of uh, wind, 150 solar, 800 uh, megawatt hour of base. There is no better precinct in the world to illustrate it. And then you tell the stories of these young kids. That you have not taken away productive land from the indigenous community. If anything, you have enhanced it. You must show the cows grazing there. <laughs> so we have not All I'm saying is that there is no disruption to the lives of the people. If anything, you have enhanced it. It's a perfect story from my... The second beauty about this is that a black-owned resource uh, company started seven years ago, a major player in the South African energy complex, built their own balance sheet, not on the back of... Uh, uh, connections, uh, parasitic relationships, but just on the strength of the players as entrepreneurs. They build an outfit that's one of the biggest in the country. And that same outfit, uh, using its own balance sheet, domestic liquidity, is able to build the biggest... Uh, it will be the biggest... Will, in the once, I'm saying once it's concluded, the biggest. It's a very powerful story. It's a powerful story of an entity that they use South African resources as an appreciation of the transition and they lead the transition. And then the third thing about this is the, the capacity, that technical capacity that resides with the South Africans. Everyone thought that, uh, of course, it still remains a, a big risk, the capacity of uh, the engineering industry to respond to the demand. You know, Paramai, when we take the, one of the things I say, I'll say in cabinet, so you want 2.2 trillion. We will, we'll do the, the, I've shared with you, I'll share with the rest of the country, how we resolve the permitting and license. Uh, business will be ready, you'll bring your capital. You know, the biggest risk is going to be the capacity of the South African engineering community to respond to the pipeline. Because the skills live, the, these skills are, are mobile. We have shown what the, um, the engineering capability is. Thanks to Stefaniti, one of the, our marquee and domestic uh, companies. The nice thing about the video, uh, Yago, I always tell you, civil engineers, you are so great. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see the structures. <laughs> they are there. The structures is uh, this rotating machine. They come with the story. No, the wind is not blowing. You can't get. But the structures are there. So that's the point. I'm sorry to other engineers. I, 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 I apologize to all of you for telling the truth. But the point, <laughs> the, the point I'm making, Bramak, is that we're able to showcase the kind of skills that I need. And, and I, I must say that they were eternally grateful. You could have taken your money somewhere. You know, I always tell people that uh, what capital does, it looks for opportunities. 
So if you choose not to give capital opportunity, of course, you can be a patriot, but you want returns. So if the Kenyan say yes and no, he will go there. So we must not uh, sit with the complac complacency of thinking that we are the anointed ones. There is no investment by decree. We must create opportunities for those investments to happen. And that uh, we must protect the jobs that are here as a minimum and add on more jobs. And I'm happy that uh, we've seen the premiers here, the MECs here, the four mayors are here. It's just a sign of commitment by Mpumaland to ensure that the jobs remain here. And it is that partnership, government and capital, patriotic South Africans. Thank you.